right guys ken here and a happy national pastel month um the month of september i have found out is national pastel month so i felt like this would be the perfect time to review crayola's portfolio series water soluble oil pastels so before we jump into that review i am going to show you guys really quickly I decided to stretch myself. I love sharing with you guys. And I bought some premium soft oil pastels. This is the Master's Touch brand. Uh, I do believe they're white labeled by Mungio. It's just a lot of similarities that I've been able to tell from some reviews I've seen on the Mungio brand. Uh, but what? Ha but anyway, um, I decided to try those out. And here is one of the first little pieces of artwork that I did with those. I just kind of want to show you guys. And this is not a review on that. I'm just showing you guys a new product that I have because I, since it's National Pastel Month, I figured I'd try to learn how to paint or you know how to work with a, a different type of pastel other than water-soluble oil. Okay, so now that that's out the way. We are looking at this particular product today, this is Portfolio Series 24 Water Soluble Oil Pastels. It says the same thing here for wet or dry work, 24 oil pastels. Now this is by Crayola and Crayola is a pretty well-known brand. I'm not sure if they are outside the United States, but definitely a pretty well-known brand here in the United States. Um, really known for producing a pretty decent quality products as used by school kids and artists alike. Um, so this is their portfolio series, um, which is, I'm assuming a more collegiate student targeted product. That's my assumption from the research that I've done and keep in mind, everything I say in this video is simply my opinion. Uh, flipping it over on the back, you're going to see portfolio series, uh, portfolio series, water soluble oil pastels offer the student artists a variety of unique and flexible features. They claim that they are bright, vivid colors, traditional with traditional creamy consistencies of oil pastels, um, dry blending into true secondary colors, wet blending into watercolor techniques. And we're gonna talk about all of that. Now, this particular box gives you different techniques that you can use with the oil pastels. Even once you open it up and talking up and with talking about that, it's opened by these little flaps that fold back into the second tray and then it flips down. So you have access to two individual trays. There is also other techniques and steps for those techniques listed on the inside of this box. Now, again, I believe this is their um, old packaging and I'm gonna tell you why in just a moment. Other than that, it says caution, oil pastels contain pigments that may stain clothing, fabrics, and other surfaces. It gives an 800 number for customer service and the time that you can call. Um, inspire creativity at www.portfolioseries.com. So there you have the website, proof of purchase uh, SKU, conforms to ASTM D4236 regulations, gives you the distributor's information as you know that the pastels are made in Spain and who is distributed by in Australia. So that's the information that comes on this package. Now, I believe this was the original package and I say that because the studio was gifted with a set of these pastels, which is what pushed me on top of it being National Pastel Month to go ahead and use these, work with these in order to uh, do this review. Spoiler alert, I'm going to be giving these away since I have two packs of them and I don't need two packs. I, I'm still working with this one. I feel like it would be wonderful to gift the gift on um, and I feel like the viewer who sent these to me would appreciate me sharing with another artist um, in order to help them grow and add to their art collection if it's something that they want to do. So we'll talk about the giveaway a little bit later on in the video. So the uh, back to the packaging. So the trays that the pastels are in slide out. You have 24 oil pastels here. 
So that's pretty much the packaging. Um, each of the pastels themselves, if you've ever worked with the oil pastel, you know that these are really, the stick itself is hard. It can be broken. It will break um, fairly easily in some instances. Um, but some artists, including myself, will break pastels in order to work with them in smaller pieces. That way you can get better coverage when you're using them, depending on the situation um, that you're in. So this is a, a, a solid stick, um, really creamy, um, oil base. It is an oil pastel and it says portfolio series, oil pastel. And then each one of them has a color name on it. Now this is Crayola, Crayola so there is no pigment information, no light fast information. But as far as I'm concerned, um, I would only be using them for fun, for play, um, in a sketchbook to kind of just kind of do some relaxing work. Um, excuse me, because it's not a medium that I work in a lot. And I'm going to change that. I'm going to start doing more practice with them because I have this set as well as the Mungio oil pastel set, water soluble oil pastel set. So, yeah, I need to start using these products much more. So that is the packaging as well as what the sticks look like. Um, you have a pretty nice range of colors, 24 there to work from. And these are really, I'm just going to tell you, these, these are, these are some pretty good oil pastels. They have really nice coverage and there's not much issue with dispersing them with water. So let's take a look at the swatch sheet first. So here is where I swatched and did an opacity test on the pastels. Uh, again, they disperse really easily with water. The only one that I had any issues with was the gray. For some reason, it just did not seem to want to release. And I'm not sure if it's the paper that I'm working on or what have you. Now, this is Grumbacher's 140 pound acid free um, cold press watercolor paper that I did the swatching and the opacity test and this, these little color mixings on. Um, and I didn't have any issues in any other areas, so I'm assuming it's just that particular color maybe. But yeah, that one didn't want to cooperate well. Um, really bright, nice, and, and, and kind of saturated colors. They are a pastel, um, they are oil pastel, so they are opaque. Um, just real nice beautiful saturated colors it's it's really straightforward i'm i was kind of surprised that this was the crayola product in all honesty um but then we're going to get into some things that you know brought back to mind that they are a crayola product now you can't really see um any residue on the black line on, on the black marker line here um from the camera but i will tell you that there is some there again this is a oil based product so you just, it just happens to be um, soluble in water and you're able to move the pigment with water. Now here you don't see that the white is too opaque and in the color swatch, I accidentally got some yellow in it. Um, but it turns out that it, once you start to build layers, it's pretty decent for highlighting. And we'll get into looking at some of that. Let's see here. Um, as I told you, each one of the colors are named, so you at least you will have that to refer to on the color swatching and when you decide to use them in a painting. Here I did a primary color mixing, uh, really untraditional, uh, but yet I still did it, and I'm smudging pastel as I rub my hand across this paper. So you have the yellow here, and then we have yellow with blue and yellow with red. Now, I had problems with the mixing especially came when it, when it came to mixing two colors. Now, one of the things that the box said was that um, they dry blend into true secondary colors. Now, that part is true. Uh, when I laid down each of the colors, like even here in the instance of the red and the blue, when I laid the red and the blue down together, they made a purple. But when I added water, it seemed to separate the colors and almost take off one of the color layers. So the wet blending into watercolor techniques was, you know, at first with the swatching kind of questionable for me. But, you know, you can't really tell, 
a lot about a product from swatching. What I will say is this, anybody that's going to work with this product, it is my suggestion that you do swatch them out because swatching is, in my in my opinion now, is going to help you get a better feel for water control um, when it comes to this product before you kind of jump into your first painting with them. Now, that's just my opinion and just my recommendation, but I really do highly suggest it. Swatch them out so that you can get a better feel for how much water it's gonna take to do or to make the pigment do what you want it to do once you've laid it down on paper. All right, so after that, I decided that I would kind of play around with the uh, pastels on some 100% cotton 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper and this is Strathmore 500 series. Um, I started out doing a landscape and then I just kind of got frustrated, it got away from me. So then I just start throwing elements on here or throwing things on here with the pastels, just kind of practicing, trying to get a better feel for, for the product. So here I did some blueberries and some cherries and I don't know, I was doing some more blueberries all over here and then I just kind of abandoned that project. Um, there's a tree that I added in the background, kind of played around with doing some rocks, trying to do a bigger rock, just seeing how I could work with the product and see how it worked with my style of art. I'm gonna be very honest. This product is not going to be for everybody. Um, but I think that it's a fun product to give a try at least once. Who knows? You may like it. And you may become really proficient in it. Because just like with any other thing, if you practice, it'll make perfect. I like the way it performed 100% watercolor paper. Um, there was a big difference with the color payoff, in my opinion, on 100% watercolor paper versus... Um, what I got from the swatch sheet on that cellulose paper, the Grumbacher paper. Uh, so then I went back to the Grumbacher paper because I wanted to compare the portfolio against the Mungio that I had. So here I decided that I would do three different little objects, a banana, a leaf, and an orange. Now the leaf was done with the Mungio um, water soluble oil pastel, Pagos watercolor and Prismacolor. Kind of mixed media, wanted to see um, if mixing that particular brand of pastels with watercolors and pencils would make a muck, make a mud, or would I a be able to distinguish the uh, different details that I was trying to put in. And for all intents and purposes, that came out really nicely. So then I wanted to try the portfolio out and see how it compared to using the Mungio. Um, because in my opinion, Mungio would be a, kind of a step up from the Portfolio series. Uh, but there's no shade on Portfolio, no sleep on it at all. So the orange was done with two or three layers of the oil pastels and then just a little color pencil to accent. Now here you can see with the highlight, I tried to use the white, it's not super opaque at all. Um, I'm not quite sure what it's for or, or what it could be used for because it just, it, it didn't seem to have much coverage at all. So I think that's something to keep in mind. The black on the other hand, um, although not opaque in its first layer, once you layer it up two or three layers, it gets really opaque and dark. Um, so there's something else to keep in mind. The shadow was done with a little um, watercolor, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe I took, yeah, or I took the, um, I'm sorry, I took the uh, pastel and sort of made a little makeshift palette by scribbling some pigment down and then just puddling it with water and using the water in order to make it really wet and watery. Now that gave me a watercolor feel and technique. Then the banana was done, um, and it is Pagos watercolor mixed in this particular one. 
uh, I needed something to help move that yellow pigment with the pastel. It did not seem to want to really disperse. So I had some trouble, but I had fun doing it. I mean, there were some things I liked, some things I really didn't like. So there are the things that I did to kind of just play around with them and get a feel for them, see what I thought about, see if they were going to be something that I continue to try to play with and work with. Um, overall, guys, I kind of like them. Um, I think that they're a great start. I think they're a great beginner product. Um, they are uh, be what I would recommend for anyone who wanted to try the oil pastel line of products out or try that medium out without having to spend a lot of money in order to get started and to decide whether or not it's something that you would want to use. And it may even open your mind up to other water soluble um, forms of pastels like the uh, watercolor crayons, um, which Karen Dosh makes an amazing brand of. Um, so I would definitely recommend them, especially for beginners. Um, anybody who wants something fun and, and and sort of just carefree to do, these are this is it. This is a, these are really nice to play with. Uh, I would not use them in any type of serious artwork. That's just me. And there may be some people out there who would, and of course, to each his own. But uh, I think that they are a nice thing to have as sort of like novelty. They they are nice to have. Um, and I said novelty, let me take that back because there are gonna be some people out there who can use this product and blow paintings out the water with them. Um, I'm just, you know, really getting my grips and my footing for knowing how to work with them and use them. And who knows one day, maybe I'll have a full video on using them and it'll turn out to be a masterpiece. Uh, but for me right now, I think they are a fun little niche product to have. And I'm going to pull them out every now and then and play with them. So let's get into this giveaway right quick because I did not want this video to be too long. And we're going to talk about the price point as well. Um, so uh, with the giveaway, uh, I was thinking all the way up until the moment I started taping this video as to how I was going to do this. So here I have the same portfolio um oil pastels that we just reviewed. Um, of course, I do recommend them, and I feel like since I had two, passing one on would be a really nice way for somebody else to kind of play with them and get a feel for them and see if it's something that they may turn out to be, you know, it may turn out to be their Picasso paintbrush. Um, so, real simple rules. Like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and this time, in order to qualify, because I've been trying to get people to use this Facebook page, I need you to post a painting on the Facebook page. It's the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page. All you have to do is follow. It, it's easy to post on there. Just post a painting. Even if it's, a, I would love it if it's one of the demos that you guys um, may have happened to try it from the channel. But even if not, just any painting, simply because I want to get the gates open on sharing with one another and just kind of talking within a community i mean because maybe we can pass on tips and tricks to each other that'll help each other grow because hey i'm open to that please help me please help me so there you go like the video make sure you subscribe and drop a piece of artwork doesn't matter what it is even if it's a pencil drawing drop a piece of artwork um on the thrifty apprentice facebook page and from the people who qualify, you'll be entered into a pool. We'll have a random drawing from that pool, and there you go. I'm going to take care of shipping and handling everything for the winner. So, guys, price point for portfolio. You can get them on Amazon for $9.49. Uh, Blick Art Material has them for $8.23 currently. You can even buy them at Staples, $9.49. It's a little bit higher than Blick. Um, same price for, as Amazon. Michaels has them, excuse me, for $17.99. I never understand why the prices at Michaels are so high and their coupons are nothing like they used to be. So, I don't know. 
I'm, I'm just completely blown away by Michaels. So, yeah, you can even get them on eBay, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Art has them for eight sixty nine. dollars um, There's a lot of different places. Jerry Autorama has them for six ninety nine. dollars uh, That is the... I'm sorry, that's not portfolio. That's not portfolio, so scratch that on Jerry's. That's not what I was looking at for Jerry's. So yeah, guys, there you go. Plenty of places to get them from. Now, I'm going to drop a link for a couple of them in the um, <clears throat> description of the video so that you can go directly to them and pick them up if you would like. Um, don't forget, one lucky person will get them in the giveaway. Uh, I'll also drop this little bombshell, the link for the Amazon. If you decide to order them from that link, I uh, must, in full disclosure, that is an affiliate link, which I use in order to try to, you know, get just a little bit of help, a little bit of money on um, continuing to purchase these art supplies, except for the ones that are gifted to the studio. So, guys, if you saw any information in this video or heard any information in this video that you thought was useful or that you liked, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Share the video. Remember that sharing is caring. Um, don't forget to follow us on the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page and Instagram. Uh, comment. Let me know. What do you think? Have you used them? Um, if you have, are you, are you a perfectionist to the point where you have mastered them? I want to know what you guys think um, on this particular product. Don't forget about the giveaway. Somebody will be winning a 24-pack. So just remember to um, follow the rules that you need to qualify. And I'll be getting back to you guys really soon in an upcoming video about uh, the winner of that. And as I tell you at the end of every single video, oh, I recommend, I recommend, really fun, just keep painting.